Hi, this is Stephen Gray, and I'm telling my story today, and thank you guys for being here, and I'm talking about the mindset of a trailblazer, and this is my story about my life, about the journey that I've been going through over the last 30-something years, and, and how God is using my life in different ways. So I'm going to jump right back in, because we were just talking about, you know, what happened and why we left the congregation that we were a part of um, to honor God. We started honoring His Ten Commandments, and He started sharing with us you know why that's so important and we didn't know all the details we didn't know where we were going that was I think the scariest part of our whole thing is that we had no idea where to go we didn't know any other church to honor the Sabbath day we didn't know even what it meant to honor the Sabbath day we just saw it in the scriptures and our church told us not to obey it and I couldn't you know swallow that I couldn't go to a congregation of people that told me not to obey what I read in the Bible because the Bible is the Word of God it's the final answer and unless you can show me some scripture that says I don't need to do it then I'm going to obey what the scripture says. So that was where it started. And then it was kind of interesting because from that point, our friend Debbie, the one that introduced Jamie to it, and her husband Jeff, um, introduced us and started wanting to go to different churches so we could find a place. So it was really cool. I'll tell you some funny stories. <laughs> one of them was we went to this small church in uh, Pomona, Pomona, California. It was in a hotel. And it was really interesting. We got there and there was nine people, including the seven of us. So there was two other people in the room. And so it was kind of interesting because we sat, we sat down and we're waiting for everybody to come and um, nobody else showed up. And the way it kind of, I'll give you the scene, we sat down at the chairs and we we're facing the pulpit. Now the behind the pulpit was a wall, like another building was right behind it. So we're facing, looking out the window at a wall and a pulpit. Now we're sitting there waiting for whoever's going to teach come up and no one actually came up. They put on a, a radio behind us. So there was a radio on a box behind us with a message coming from somebody from Pennsylvania. So some other state was teaching on a radio in this church room, and I'm looking out a window with my two young children. One was like four or five years old, and the other one was, uh, I think, uh, you know, one year old or something like that. So we're in there, and it was a great message. It was a good message and everything. Uh, but the interesting thing was, um, it was about four hours long. It was a four hour long. So we're looking out of a window, listening to a four hour message. Then after the four-hour message, they wanted to fellowship, so we were there for another hour or so. Uh, it was pretty crazy, and so it was funny because my wife got a migraine, and she went down by the pool and laid down. And we all kind of gathered together, and we were like, well, what do you guys think? Is this our home? And everybody was like, trying to be you know, politically correct. Well, you know, let's just keep looking a little bit. Maybe we can find something else that you know, might fit for us. So we, we decided not to go back there. So then we went to another place, and it was kind of cool. We went to this church in Garden Grove, and this church was our old building. We used to worship there on Sunday. This church was worshiping there on Saturday. So, because at that time, we thought the Sabbath was Saturday, just like, that's what it says in the Bible, right? Or that's what people think it says in the Bible. It doesn't say that at all, but people think it's Saturday. So, we're going on Saturday to this church. We're like, man, we used to be here every week, and they're going to be here tomorrow. But, um, we, so we were there. And it was interesting, because uh, while we were there, it was kind of dry, and it, the, the preaching was really boring, and the songs were really boring and, and hymnish kind of and it was no energy in the room no excitement no thrills no thrills and then we sat down to meet with the leaders because it was a big congregation and we knew they knew what they're talking about they knew a lot more about the bible than we did so we met with the leaders at their house and we were talking to them and they were trying to convey a message saying that we were lost and not part of the body of christ because they had not baptized us we had been baptized i had been baptized you know 10 years before, so my wife was 15 years before, we had been committed disciples up to that point, but because they didn't touch us with their hands and baptize us, they were assuming that we weren't true disciples. So of course, you know, that didn't make a lot of sense. So biblically speaking, they were off and I went through the scripture with them and that didn't make any sense. So we said, okay, well, the third time is a charm. We're gonna find another, see if we can find another congregation. So we went to the, another church in Anaheim and it was pretty cool because this was a abandoned building. It was kind of dirty, but it didn't matter. We didn't care about that. So we went in, and there was a lot of people there. They had more energy. So we're like, wow, this is going to be cool, and they're going to have a potluck after. So we sit there. Now, they had a kid's room, but it really wasn't quite a kid's room. It was like an old library room, and you go into the library, and my wife had to sit in there with, with Maddox, and it had a little radio that can hear the message, but it was all staticky, like kind of like that, staticky, and it was just a, probably about four feet by four by by eight feet long so it was a really narrow room she just had to sit in there by herself with my child um, there was no other women in there and it was a really bad situation and the message again was cold 
but there was energy in the room. And it was so you know, interesting that the pastor was next to us in the room and was falling asleep in the message. So we were like, well, you know, this is interesting. So we stayed and was, you know, we're going to still <laughs> sit this out. So we get to lunch and we're having lunch and it was, I mean, I don't want to even say this, but I'm going to, I, I have to, because I just got to tell you what happened. It was just really encouraging, but it was really sad because there was people there eating and it, I mean, I didn't care about fellowship and there was a gentleman there that was right across from me. He was blind and we didn't mind that. I mean, it was cool because he was an awesome guy. We had great conversation. But it was just hard because my kids didn't want to eat there because he was eating with his hands. And I, I don't know if that's in, intentional. I don't know if that's bad or good. I don't know. But he was just kind of picking the food up and putting it in his mouth with his hands. And, and it was just hard to, 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 you know, it was hard for my kids to be there. And they didn't feel comfortable. So we just had to leave. And we were just like, man, this is so difficult to find a place um, where we can, you know, worship. So then... We went out to um, Debbie because they had a place out in the valley and they were worshiping out there and, and they were saying that there was a place out there that was really good and, and they thought it was great. So we went to Debbie's house and we spent the night there. And it was interesting because as I'm talking to Debbie and her husband, you know, they were thinking the same thing, that their sins weren't forgiven because that particular church did not put their hands on them and all this. And biblically speaking, it didn't make any sense. And so I, you know, I got kind of belligerent about it and said, wait a minute, we need to look at what the Bible says. Let's not talk about our opinion and what we think is the truth. What did the scripture says? And there was no way that that was the case. You know, we knew we had our sins forgiven because the Bible showed it. Not because we believed it, because we matched up with what the Bible talked about is a true conversion of Christ. We didn't pray Jesus in our heart. We didn't accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior and just do that and do nothing else. We didn't say we're saved by um, faith alone or by um, by, um, you know, belief alone or, or any of the false doctrines that are out there. We didn't say any of that type of stuff. We didn't say the sinner's prayer, which is nowhere near found in the Bible. We didn't say any of the deception teachings that are out there. What we did, we actually became a disciple of Jesus, like the Bible says. We started following him and his word. We repented from our sins. We stopped sinning and started turning in a direction, different direction, even though we fell back in sin. But I turned the direction and made a decision to, to become different. And, you know, I confessed with my mouth and I did believe in my heart that Jesus was Lord. And I went and got baptized in water for the forgiveness of our sins so I could receive the gift of the Holy Spirit and add it to the body of Christ, just like the Bible says in Acts 2, 36. So we know we were disciples of Christ and we knew we had had our sins forgiven. But then it was interesting because we went to this other congregation out there with Debbie and they were trying to say the same thing. And I was like, where are all these people coming up with this stuff? And it was just an arrogance that they believe that they were the one church and all this stuff. We're like, man, this is so difficult to try to find a congregation that can just look at the scriptures and leave the scriptures by themselves. Just let the Bible do the talking. So we prayed to God, you know, God, lead us to where you want us to be. Lead us to what church you want us to go to. Lead us to a congregation of people that are going to just follow the scriptures and just leave it at that. And so it happened, finally. You know, the, finally the Lord found us a home. And so we drove out to an area called Temecula, excuse me, which is about 60 miles away from our home. We started going there every Saturday because at that time we still believed that the Sabbath was Saturday. So we were out there and it was really encouraging because we met some brothers, Dave and Scott, and these guys are the ministers. And they had a business, and so they didn't even ask for tithe. And we were like, wow, these guys are preaching to God for the word of God, not for money. So I was like, I want to do that. I said, I would never ask for a tithe for, for um, you know, preaching the word. And so they didn't, but we gave anyway. And, and the church grew, and, and there was people there. And, they, you know, the kids would get up and say scripture reading. And then they honored all the feast days, you know, Passover, Feast of Unleavened Bread, Feast of First Fruit. And they started teaching about how those are the fulfillment of Christ. How the Passover was when Jesus died on the cross. How the Feast of Unleavened Bread is when Jesus was buried. How the Feast of First Fruit was when Jesus rose. How the Feast of Weeks was when the um, feast when, when Moses went up to the mountain, got the Ten Commandments, and brought it down. That was the Feast of Weeks, and how Jesus was fulfilling them. And then he, they were showing us how the next feast was the Feast of um, Trumpets, where the the alarm was being sounded, and people were getting set out to go into the kingdom of God. And the Day of Atonement is when they prayed and atoned for all the people. And the Feast of Tabernacles when Jesus was going to come and get his bride. And then the Great Tribulation would take over from that point on. They started sharing this stuff with us. And we started learning. We were like, wow, we never heard this before. We don't have to honor Christmas and Easter and all this stuff. My daughter's birthday is on December 25th. And we don't honor Christmas because it's a pagan holiday. And we learned this through these brothers and sisters at this church. 
And so we had an awesome time. We used to go to the Feast of Tabernacles every year where people would fly in all over the world and come and worship God for a seven-day, eight-day feast. And we would get together and spend time together and talk. And it was such an encouraging time for about two years. And then the Lord opened our eyes again. The Lord opened our eyes because I started asking some questions about the Feast of Trumpets because, you know, we were like, God, you know, all the other feast days were fulfilled. Passover was fulfilled on Jesus' first coming. He died on, you know, unleavened bread. He was buried on the Feast of First Fruit. He rose on, I'm sorry, rose on First Fruit. He um, ascended to heaven and sent down the Holy Spirit on Pentecost, which is the Feast of Weeks. He said, but the next feast is called the Feast of Trumpets. That's the next feast to be fulfilled. But nobody focused on it. Everybody was focused on the Feast of Tabernacles. I said, wait, there's two other feasts that has to be fulfilled first. But nobody could explain it. Nobody. We would go to the minister and say, what does the Feast of Trumpets mean? And they said, it's just a warning. And I was like, I don't understand. That doesn't make any sense. And so God had a zero in on the Feast of Trumpets. And so he started showing us how the Feast of Trumpets is a select a feast because it's not talked about that much in the Bible. But he started showing us something about the Sabbath day. And he started showing us that um, it's something about the new moon because Debbie came to us again and said, Stephen and Jamie, I think the Sabbath is not on Saturday either. And I was like, well, why do you say that? I said, of course it's on Saturday. Where else could it be? He goes, no, I think it has something to do with the moon. And I said, the moon? How do you figure that? He goes, I don't know. I just have something to do with the moon. I was like, okay, well, let me do my due diligence. So I went to the Bible again printed up all scriptures on about the moon, and there was a feast in the Bible called the New Moon Celebration. And I was like, New Moon Celebration? What the heck does that mean? Come to find out, the word moon means month in Hebrew. So, New Month Celebration. So, because I also learned that the Sabbath is during the daytime hours. It's not at night, like we were told. It doesn't start on a Friday night. It's not a Sabbath night. It's a Sabbath day. Because in Genesis, God separated the day from the night. He called the day day. He called the night night. Those are two different time periods. And it's never a Sabbath day and night. It's a Sabbath day. So a day starts when the sun comes up and it ends at evening when the sun goes down, just as scripture says. He did, there was evening and there was morning the first day. Because if he was talking about a nighttime, he'd say, and there was dusk and there was dawn the first night. And there wasn't dusk and dawn. It was morning till evening is the Sabbath daytime hours. And so we started seeing this and we're like, wow, God, thank you so much for showing us this. Now we're looking forward to the scripture and we see all these scriptures about the new moon celebration. And then God started revealing to us how the new moon salvation is directly tied to the bride of Christ. How, how come nobody knows about this? How come nobody's teaching this? So we started sharing it with our pastor at the church. He didn't want to have nothing to do with it. He didn't want to hear about it. And then God has started revealing to us who the true Israelites of the Bible are which are not the Jews over there in Israel right now. We were told that the, the Jews are God's people. But the Bible, if you look at what Jesus says about Jews and what he talks about the Jews, the Jews are the people that are here today on this earth now are the people that Jesus, if you read Revelation 2.9 and Revelation 3.9, calls the synagogue of Satan. Now, I didn't say that. That's, I'm just telling you what the scripture says. You can read about it in Revelation 2.9 and 3.9. Jesus says that out of his own mouth. Because the people that run this world right now are called themselves Jews. See, but in the Bible, they were called Israelites. They were the 12th tribe of Israel. There was never a tribe of Jews. They were called Jews in Babylon by Nebuchadnezzar. Just as today, the Israelites are the true Israelites of the Bible. And which I learned who they are. They were the ones that were brought over here on slave ships. And you can read about that in Deuteronomy, um, Deuteronomy 28, verses uh, 15 through 68. You can read about the, the punishment that the Israelites went through. So we started learning that, man, I'm probably an Israelite. I'm probably an Israelite from the tribe of Judah. And I started looking through the Bible and started seeing how the Israelites, who they really are. They've been punished by God for 4,000 years because of disobedience. So I started sharing this with that pastor and that minister. And of course, he didn't want to have nothing to do with it because he's Jewish. See, that would be meaning that he's not one of the people of God. Now, he is because he's been baptized for the forgiveness of his sin. He's part of the body of Christ. But biblically speaking, he's a Gentile, and the true Israelites are the actual Jews. So we saw that, and that our identity was stolen. So when God revealed that to me, I shared it to him, and of course, he didn't want to have anything again against, uh, to do with it. And again, he tells me, you can't teach this information in the church. And I'm thinking, 
How do we keep going to these churches that people don't want us to teach what's in the scripture? It's right there, clear as day, easy to see. There's nowhere in the scriptures that says that God loves Jews. It says he loves, loves the Israelites all throughout the scriptures. So now we're at a crossroad again. What are we going to do? So it got to the point where it became very disunifying to go to a congregation where they didn't want us to teach the scriptures. They didn't want to teach who the true Israelites were. They didn't want us to teach um, about the, the new moon celebration because that means the Sabbath is not Friday or Saturday. The Sabbath is based on the new moon. Like, give an example, this month, the Sabbath is actually going to be on Wednesday. So during Wednesday, we take that Wednesday off from the time it gets bright at light until the time it gets dark, and we don't work during that time. And that's the Sabbath day, and we don't work during that time. And that's going to be the same for four months. I'm sorry, four weeks. After the four weeks, we're going to spot the new moon again, and then it's going to be, um, you know, we're going to look, and it'll probably be on Thursday or Friday. The, the Sabbath changes. The only reason why it changes is because right now there is a Gregorian calendar that we go by that was invented by the Vatican. And that's why it appears like it changes. But it really doesn't change. It's always the 7th, 14th, 21st, and 28th day of the month. And that's what God revealed to us. So the way you truly honor the Sabbath day, what we learn is that you spot the new moon at night. The next day is the first day of the month. Six days later is the seventh day, and you take that day off, regardless of what day it lands on. See, because now it lands on a day. Back then, in the Israelites' days, there was no January, February, March, April, May. There was no Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. It was the seventh day, the tenth day, the fourteenth day of the month, the twenty-eighth day. There was never a day name. Those are pagan gods' names. And that's what God revealed to us over the last few years. So we started learning this message. And we started teaching it. The more we honored it, God opened the floodgates of the Bible and started teaching us knowledge about what's happening in the world and the new world order and what's going on in the world and how God is starting to bring his people back under covenant. See, the covenant of God was the Ten Commandments and it was all started based on the Sabbath day. One of the first things he taught them was the Sabbath and that was in Exodus 16 verse 1. When he started teaching them about manna, you go get the manna during the day and you get the quail at night. He was teaching them to work six days and rest on the seventh day. And then he put it in the Ten Commandments as the fourth commandment and made it a covenant of God. That is a covenant, which is a mark. It's a mark of God. And that mark of God explains how we honor him and we're under his covenant. If you're not under the covenant of God, then you're out of covenant. And you see what happened to the Israelites for 4,000 years who were out of covenant. And that's why this great tribulation is coming. If you read Revelation 12, then read Revelation 13, and then read Revelation 14, you'll see that the commandments are going to still be there for the people that get left behind and don't make it to the kingdom of God. Because the angels are going to have to come teach him because the 144,000 are going to be in heaven. That's what's going to happen. And God started revealing that to us. And I was like, wow. So for the next eight years, God started sharing this message with us and started having me teach this message. So, you know, there was a time period where, you know, he started teaching us this and it was back in 2016. And, you know, God had been prodded at me, prodding at me, Stephen, it's time to teach, time to teach. And I kind of ran. I was scared to teach. I was scared to do it because I didn't know if I knew enough. I didn't know if I should teach it. I didn't know if I had the ability to teach it. I didn't know if I had the skill set to teach it. I was afraid. Kind of like um, Jonah was afraid to go teach the message in Nineveh. And so God put him in the belly of the fish. For three days to think about it and gave him an opportunity to think and uh god did the same thing with me you know he he allowed me to um he allowed me to get sick and when i got sick you know it was a, a bad situation i'll tell you about that story in the next video but he allowed me to get sick because he allowed me to really think through whether if i'm going to teach this message because the world needed to hear this message and the world needed to hear um, about his Sabbath day, his true Sabbath day, which is the seventh day, which is six days after you, I mean, the seven days after you spot the new moon. The new moon is that little sliver that comes up in the West, um, and, or if you're in the United States, it comes up in the West. And that new moon, when you spot it, 
you count seven days and that's how you get to the seventh day and you do not work on that day. So my wife and I and my family, we don't work on that day. My kids don't go to school on that day and that's the day of rest. And we've been honoring it and God's been blessing our lives. But we started teaching it and, and a few people started to uh, hear it and started to honor it. And now it's starting to spread. And you'll hear about that on the next video of how it's starting to spread. And how the people that really want to know the truth are starting to learn this message and are willing to live this message. Because this is what God's doing. He's calling his people back under covenant because he's about to separate them through the great tribulation. He's about to separate the wheat from the chaff. He's about to separate the bride of Christ from the harvest, the wedding party that comes through the great tribulation. In other words, they get killed for their faith. He's going to separate that group. And then from that point, then everyone else goes through the uh, wrath of God. And, and it's going to not be good. But perfectly, you know, you that are watching this video will repent and want to start honoring the Lord. So I just appreciate you guys, you know, listening to this message again. And, you know, subscribe to our channel. Subscribe and start watching our videos. And, you know, every time I upload a new video, you'll get a notification if you click that little bell there um, at the subscribe level. And... You know, it'll really, hopefully this message will impact you. I hope you study it out. I hope you don't just take my word for it. I hope you go and look up every scripture. And you can use BibleGateway.com um, to be able to get all the scriptures in order. It'll show them to you. I mean, I don't want you to just take my word for it. I want you to believe what I just said because it is absolutely true. But I want you to go and learn it for yourself so it could be your convictions. So again, thank you so much for listening to my message. And I will um, look forward to seeing you on the next video. Have a great day.